Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Julia Hayes. I'm one of the associate pastors here, and it's my great joy to welcome you to this service of worship here at The Vine, an online campus of Wrightsville United Methodist Church. We're so grateful that you are here and worshiping with us, and we'd love the chance to get to connect with you and get to know you a little bit. So if you would take a moment and either click the link that's in this video description, or scan the QR code that will be on your screen in just a few moments. There you can let us know that you're here and also let us know how we can be praying for you this week. Now I invite you to take a big, deep breath and let's prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me now in our opening congregational prayer. The words will be found on your screen. Let's pray now together. Holy and loving God, thank you that through the death of Jesus, you have put to death our old selves. Now, through Jesus's resurrection, you are resurrecting us to a new life. Help us to live as those who have been brought from death to life. In Jesus' name, amen. I wandered so aimless, life filled with sin. I wouldn't let my dear Savior in. Then Jesus came like a stranger. have the great privilege of going before God in prayer. Will you join me now as we pray together? Holy and loving God, we thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you that through Jesus's resurrection, you have proved that there is nothing, not even death, that can separate us from your great love. God, help us to live as Easter people who know the power of the resurrection at work even in our lives today. God, so often we have settled for small dreams instead of believing what can be possible through your power and your love. God, even in our ordinary lives, in the midst of our day-to-day -day tasks, we ask that you would be present and open our eyes to the possibilities that you are calling us to. Lord, we are aware that we are living in a world in deep need of resurrection. And so God, we pray for your resurrection power 
to be unleashed in the broken places in our world. God, we pray for all of those places in the world that are experiencing war and struggle. We pray especially for Israel and for Gaza. We pray for all those who are sick or suffering. We pray for those who are close to death. And God, we pray for all those who we are aware of, who are in need of your love, and we name them before you now, either out loud or in our hearts. God, we thank you that you not only hear our prayers, but that you listen to them. Trusting in your great love, we pray now the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we transition now into a time of reflection and generosity, I'd like to remind you that you can always give to support the ministry of Wrightsville United Methodist Church through the mail and through our website, wrightsvilleumc.org. Let us now continue to worship God. Hi, Wrightsville kids. I'm Pastor Julia, and today I have a really cool story from the Bible to tell you about. One of Jesus' friends was named Peter, and Peter loved Jesus. Peter was so passionate and wanted to follow Jesus around everywhere. And Peter thought that he was always going to love Jesus that much. Have you ever had a best friend like that? Someone that you know you're going to be friends with for your whole, whole lifetimes of fit infinity. Well, that's how Peter felt about Jesus. Except one night when Jesus was arrested and taken to the cross, Peter got really scared. And some people came up and asked him if he was one of Jesus' friends. And he said no. And then they asked him again, and he said no again. And they asked him a third time, and he said he'd never even met Jesus. Whew. Can you imagine saying that about your best friend? Well, we know after Easter that something amazing happened, which is that even though Jesus was killed, he came back to life. He was resurrected. But Peter was kind of nervous to see Jesus. He wanted to see him because they were friends, but he was scared. Wouldn't Jesus be mad at him? Well, a couple of days passed and Peter still hadn't seen Jesus. And then Peter and some of his other friends were doing something they did a lot, which is go fishing. Have you ever been fishing? Well, when they were coming out of their boats and getting onto shore, they saw Jesus. And Peter was so nervous because he was sure Jesus would be mad. But do you know what Jesus was doing? Jesus was making them all breakfast. What? Isn't that cool? And Jesus and Peter and all their other friends sat around a campfire and ate food together. And then Jesus took Peter aside. And Peter was sure that this was when Jesus was going to say how mad he really was. But instead, he just said really simply, do you love me? And Peter said, yes, I love you, Jesus. And Jesus said, feed my sheep. Which means basically, 
take care of my people, the same people that you love and that I love. It was so cool because even though Peter didn't even imagine how Jesus wouldn't be mad at him, Jesus forgave him. Have you ever been forgiven by a friend? It feels really, really good. I hope you know that no matter what, Jesus will always love you. Even when you mess up really bad, Jesus will still be there and will be happy to be your friend. Let's say a prayer now together. God, thank you for making me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me even when I mess up. In Jesus' name, amen. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Eunsu Kang. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Ricefield United Methodist Church. It is my great privilege to deliver God's message today. Last Sunday, we celebrate Easter with great joy. Between the resurrection and ascension, Jesus encounters his disciples and transforms their lives. As we embark on this journey towards Pentecost, we will see how Jesus meets with his people and changes their lives. The first story for today's message is from John chapter 21st, verses from 3 through 17. Now hear the word of God. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, We will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, only about a hundred yards off. When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went abroad and hauled that net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my limbs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart 
Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Speak through me and always be on me, so that your word might be heard by your people this day, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'd like to begin this time with this question. What is the most memorable meal you have ever had in your life so far? It could be a Christmas dinner with your family or loved ones, or a birthday party spread, or the moment when you fed your children for the first time, or simply an ordinary dinner with food cooked by mom and dad. For me, it's a memory from about 16 years ago when I was just starting high school. It was a tough time because my mom had been diagnosed with stage three cancer. She needed surgery and a long round of chemo, which meant our house would be empty for almost one year. Back then, just having my mom come back home felt like a miracle. On the day of my mom's first surgery, I also had a big exam, the kind that could shape my future in my school. So I had to choose between being at the hospital for mom or taking the test and showing her good result later. And I chose the exam because I thought my mom would be disappointed if I didn't take the exam. Did I get good grades? No, not really. I couldn't focus on the exam all day because I was so worried about my mom. I deeply regretted not being by her side. I felt terribly sorry for mom, the guilt of not being there for her during her scariest and most painful moment lingered heavily in my heart. A few months later, before her next surgery and a chemo, she came home for a short while. The next morning, I was getting ready for school as usual. And when I walked into the kitchen, I was so surprised. There was mom's home-cooked meal prepared on the table. It wasn't anything fancy, just the usual homemade food I always had. And mom said, until have breakfast. My mom, who has still weak from her treatment and surgery, so couldn't stand for five minutes, had made it for me. While eating breakfast, she didn't say much and just kept putting food on my plate. I can never forget the meal of that day and its taste and that moment. It was the moment filled with mixed emotions. A flood of guilt and remorse overwhelmed me. Yet, there was also a sense of relief that mom was back and her comforting love surrounded me. Every time I read the scripture passage today, I often think, wouldn't Peter have felt like this? Well, you know, seeing Jesus with scars on his hands, cooking fish for him. So let's dive into the word. After the last supper with his disciples, Jesus was betrayed and denied by his disciples. He was put on trial, crucified, and then raised back to life by the power of God. By the time we reach John chapter 21st, Jesus has already revealed himself to Mary Magdalene in the garden and to his disciples in the upper room. Now, let us step into the shoes of disciples and let us imagine their emotions and situations they must be experiencing. They are emotionally and physically exhausted. They have already encountered the resurrected Jesus twice, who, miraculously passing through walls, comforted them and assured them with the words, Peace be with you. And also, he outlined their next steps. He says, As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
So the disciples are certain, they certain Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, reason from the dead, but they are unsure what to do next. So they revert to what feels familiar, to what they did before joining Jesus in ministry. Peter goes fishing and the other disciples join him. But here is the issue. Peter and the others are trying to go back to a life that doesn't exist anymore. The resurrection of Jesus changed everything. Through the Last Supper, Jesus wiped the slate clean of the old era before the resurrection and opened the door to a new era of life through his resurrection. They can't just go back to how things were before Jesus rose from the dead. So their old way of fishing is not working. They can't catch any fish, but they haven't figured out the new way yet. They were kind of stuck in a liminal space. As they struggle through the night, Jesus shows up on shore and he gently and powerfully pushes them towards a new life, transformed life through restoration, reconciliation, and reaffirmation. So first of all, Jesus restores their body and soul by feeding them. These disciples have been going through the ringer these past few weeks. They have experienced a roller coaster of emotions from the joy of Palm Sunday to the pain of betrayal, the guilt of denying their master, the horror of the crucifixion, the sorrow of Jesus being in the tomb, hiding fear of the Jewish religious leaders and Roman shoulders, and the confusion of the empty tomb an exhilaration of seeing Jesus again, and the frustration of not catching any fish. They are physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually are drained. Then Jesus invites his disciples to the table, saying, come, have breakfast. Jesus takes charge, making the fire, setting the table, and cooking for his disciples. He takes the bread and fish and serves it to them with his own hand, the nailed, scarred hands. Jesus turned the empty beach into abundant banquet hall. Jesus provided the last supper in a closed space crafted by humans, but now offered the first breakfast in an open space created by God. And here's the something even more gracious. In verse 9, it says, Jesus was cooking over a charcoal fire. The word charcoal fire appears only once more in the Gospels in John chapter 18, where Simon Peter warms himself at a charcoal fire outside the high priest's house while Jesus is being tried inside. It's at this fire that Simon Peter would deny knowing Jesus three times. Now, this same Jesus invites Peter to be warmed of another charcoal fire. Jesus transforms the fire of denial at that night into the fire of love in the morning. When Jesus serves breakfast to them, it not only fills their stomachs, but also pours grace into their souls. Jesus restores their body and soul. And now it is time for a reconciliation. 
Jesus reconciles their fractured relationship. After breakfast, Jesus has a conversation with Peter. It's only been days since Peter denied Jesus three times, and this is their first chance for a heart-to-heart -to -heart talk about their relationship. Three times Peter was asked, and three times he denied being one of the Jesus disciples. In that moment, he had good reason to fear for his life, but also had good reason to trust the Lord, but he didn't. He chose to push away the truth in search of temporary security. But here on the beach, Jesus does not dwell on the death of Peter's betrayal. Jesus does not blame, judge, or insult Peter. Jesus does not force Peter beyond his limit with a scarlet letter on his chest. Instead, Jesus asked the only question, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? We are not exactly sure what Jesus means by this, but some biblical scholars suggest it refers to Peter's friends and his life. So in other words, Jesus is asking Peter if he still claims to love Jesus more than the other disciples love Jesus. According to the Gospel of Matthew, after their last supper together, Peter had pledged himself fully to Jesus. He said, even if all fall away on count of you, I never will. But as we know, that was not true. Peter did fall away, denying Jesus three times that very night. Now, Peter faces Jesus with shame and guilt over his betrayal. But Jesus doesn't rub in it, saying, well, so much for your promise never to fall away. Instead, Jesus asked Peter if he still loves Jesus on the other side of his life's greatest regret. Three times, Peter denied Jesus. Three times, Jesus asked for his love. Jesus transforms three questions of denial at night into three questions of love in the morning. So Jesus reconciles their fractured relationship. Now, Jesus reached the pinnacle of his guidance towards the new life through reaffirmation. Jesus reaffirms his call upon Peter. Each time Jesus questions, Peter, do you really love me? Peter responds, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Each time Peter confesses his love for Jesus, Jesus commissions him saying, feed my lambs tend my sheep, and feed my sheep. In other words, Jesus is saying, if you really love me as you say you do, take good care of those I care about. Jesus reaffirmed his call for Peter to lead the church, to be the rock upon which he would build his church. So Peter's identity has been transformed. The fisher of man is now to be the shepherd of the flock. No more lingering in the liminal space. He now moves from a space of shame and guilt to a space of mercy and forgiveness. He now steps away from the old life and toward the new life. He now moves from the shadow of uncertainty to the assurance of faith. Jesus reaffirms his call upon his disciples. 
Do you remember the words written in John chapter 13, where the Last Supper begins? It says, Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Throughout this year, we have experienced the unconditional love of God, who has never once abandoned us through our sermon series. It is the love that clothes us in garment of skin instead of fig leaves. It is the love that washes our feet to cleanse our fault. It is the love that gave his life to grant us new birth. It is the love that provides the mercy and grace at the breakfast table. And this is the love to the end. And this love gently and powerfully pushed us to step of the liminal space and move towards the new life. So beloved Riceville, we journey as Easter people. Though the path may not always be easy, no matter how many times you have stumbled or how weary and worn out you feel, remember that breakfast on the shore. That is where restoration began. That is where you can take steps towards new life. So come and have breakfast together. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy and loving God, we thank you for revealing your boundless love and grace through Jesus Christ. Help us embrace your restoration, reconciliation, and reaffirmation in our lives. Empower us to step out of the liminal space. May we walk in the new life you offer free from past burdens and filled with hope. Guide and transform us according to your purpose. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Beloved Riceville, step out of the liminal space. Our risen Lord meets us to guide us what we are to do next. Just come and have breakfast and hear Christ asking you, do you love me? May our lives be a witness to our answer. May our God of love and peace, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, go with you and stay with you this day and forevermore. Amen.